Hydro Stick Ministry presents Bible Study Basics. Welcome one, welcome all. Praise God, beloved. I believe and hope that you are safe, happy, and blessed wherever you are. If there could be any misfortunes, I pray that through Jesus Christ, I pray God through Jesus Christ, that God shall work unto you and do everything. Convert it into your goodness. Let us pray and read something from the Bible that will form basics for the coming presentations that you will see from our channel. Let us pray. Our loving Master, we come before thee, glorifying and honoring thy holy name. Thank you for being faithful to us. Thank you for caring for us. Above all, thank you for giving Jesus Christ that he should die on the cross so that God we may be saved. As we are studying some basics, some introduction to Bible prophecies, be with us, Lord, from now till the end. Let the Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guider. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Beloved, I've seen it good before we begin the prophecies which shall be flowing, family life presentations, and so many others. I've seen it good with some basics. On what we expect, it is an extension of the previous video of introduction to Karyostic Ministry. And it is also an introduction to the next videos. Number one, God never does anything without revealing it to his servants. The book is Amos 3 verse 7. That one should be always in your hand. As you stand in the Bible, as you listen to the presentations that we shall be having, that God never does anything without representing or without informing his servants, the prophets. Amos the river says, seven, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So, beloved, before God can do something, he must communicate it. Before God sent the flood, he communicated with Noah. Before God went to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he communicated the message with Abraham. Before God will come to destroy this world, before Jesus comes, he must communicate with his faithful people. Point number one. Point number two. As far much as we shall be reading the scripture, we can never read one scripture and make a conclusion of everything being spoken out of the Bible. For example, there are some verses which are very controversial. That not that which cometh from outside can defile a man, but that which cometh from inside. Making some people to say, even if I eat the way I want, even if I dress the way I want, even if I do whatever I want, it will not destroy me. But take a caution. Take a caution, beloved. Take a caution. If you read the Bible, verse and it has controversial issues, refer to other Bible texts to establish a theory. That one is based in the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1. It has been repeated several in the scripture in the Old Testament. But let me read this single verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. The Bible 1 of God reads, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall our word be established. So, beloved, if you read a certain theory, or you want to come with a certain study, if you read the first line, and maybe it brings confusion to you, try to refer to other verses of the scripture. Note that. Something else. The scripture, the Bible with the 66 books, should be our supreme authority for every Christian. For every Christian. Not church manual, not any other doctrine. Beloved, we are to follow the Bible, not the traditions of men. The book is 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Apostle Paul speaking. He says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine. Number one, doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. For instruction in righteousness. The function of the scripture. All, beginning from Genesis. Up to Revelation, excluding no single book. Some people say 
that the book of Exodus of Genesis is outdated. <laughs> but beloved, there are a lot of prophecies in the book of Genesis. We shall be looking at a series of them. There are a lot of prophecies in the whole Bible. There are a lot of messages that are applicable unto us at this time. So all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, so that the man of God may be completely furnished into every good work. Verse 17 reads, That a man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. Something else. How shall we do to understand the scripture so that we can make correct connections as the Holy Spirit is guiding us? We can't make a conclusion, as I've said, with one scripture. We should re refer here, there, and confirm the book of Ecclesiastics, written by the wisest man at those times, the wisest man that lived. Save for Jesus. Ecclesiastics chapter 7. Let's listen unto what the servant of God is saying. 7 verses 27. The Bible reads, Behold, this I have found, said the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. Beloved, if you want to prove something that is true, there are some people who are conflicting. You should listen to one. Listen to the other, listen to the other, gather the information, then make a good and a decided decision. The Bible, you should read it here and there. Beloved, you have seen that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a one shall be established. Let's also look for a second witness concerning this. The book is Isaiah. Isaiah 28 verses 10. God is speaking through his prophet Isaiah. What does he say? But let's begin from verse 9 so that we may understand what God wants us to know at this time. Verse 9. And it shall be said in that day. That is Isaiah. I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 28 verses 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand the doctrine? God is asking. Who shall he teach knowledge? A servant of God is asked, Who shall God teach knowledge? Who shall God teach doctrine? And make him have understanding. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So friends, we should read the whole scripture from Genesis to Revelation, comparing every verse with a certain theme to understand it fully. And this one, if you use it, you will know that the true prophets and the false prophets, because a, post, a false prophet will establish a theory that cannot be supported with multiple scriptures, will just come with one independent, independent verse and support his theory. But that is not for Christians. Something else you should know. Beloved, if Jesus Christ said something, another prophet arises saying against him, he is a lie. God, the spirit of prophets, are subject to prophets. And God is not an author of confusion. The book is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. God is speaking through Apostle Paul, giving us guidance. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We shall begin from verse 32 and verse 33 also read. And the spirit of prophets are subject to the prophets. So John can't say something that the Paul is speaking against. Are you getting me? Why? It is the same Holy Spirit that guided Moses. It is the same Holy Spirit that guided John who wrote the book of Revelation. So spirit are subject to spirit. Verse 33, for God is not the heart of confusion, but of peace, as all, as in all churches of the saints. A church of a saint, remember the Catholic ministry, representing the church. The church of saints, the church of saints should have order, no confusion. And by the way, do you know why some people disregard the Old Testament or some chapters or some books of the Bible? It's because Satan who is so 
deceiving and deceiver. In John chapter 8 verse 44, you belong of your father the devil who has been the deceiver and a killer, from, a murderer from the very beginning. So because Satan is a deceiver, he doesn't want people to look at some books, especially Daniel and Revelation, which has the prophecy, the greatest prophecy. Another point, history, history, it is so key, very important in our understanding of prophecy and every other aspect. History is very important. You see, Satan is fighting against history. Why? He knows if we know where we are coming from. If we know that we were once God destined us to stay in the Garden of Eden, we will wish to go back there. We will obey God. If we understand how Satan came on earth, we shall not obey him. So because Satan knows if we understand this secret, we shall be against him. He wants to blind us on history. For example, Papa say, Papa, the Catholic Rome, 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 Papa Rome, persecuted and saints for 12 or 60 years. But now they has that history because it is dark. But they, that's why it is called Dark Ages from 538 AD to 1798. So if we know whatever it did, we shall know it may do the same or it shall do the same in the last days. So we shall be prepared. If we know the story of Joe, if we know the story of Noah, if we know the story of Lord, we shall be prepared not to face the same things. That's why Jesus is speaking in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 26. He gives an example. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be unto the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So God wants us to read the history. When Jesus Christ is speaking in another instance, he tells them, you have you not read? Have you not read? Several times. So, Satan fights history. But history is very key. Let me not prove this as we end. The book is Ecclesiastics. You can see I'm referring New Testament, to Old Testament, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Ecclesiastics chapter 1, verses 9. A very key principle. Ecclesiastics chapter 1, verses 9. The Bible, one of God. Prince. Not here. <laughs> I love God and I glorify him for his love for us. The thing that has been is that which shall be. And that which is done is what we shall be done. And there's no new thing under the sun. So because Satan knows whatever the secret he used. And by the way, just reason up. Which temptation did Satan bring to our parents, Adam and Eve? He tempted Eve with eating. Which temptation did Jesus receive as the first one? Eating. Convert these stones that they may be brother to may eat. Jesus understood the history so he was able to overcome Satan. If you understand that eating is also a temptation for every Christian, we will not indulge ourselves in appetite. We shall not eat food that does not glorify God. We understand. But what if we don't understand? We shall perish. The book is Romans, written by Apostle Paul. Romans, chapter 15, verses 4. The Bible reads, For whomsoever things were, were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I repeat, 15 verses 4, Romans. For whatsoever things which were written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures that might have hope. So everything that were written about Moses, about Israelites, were written for us, that we may have hope. But who are these for our hope? Who? Who? Let's go to First Corinthians, so that we can know who. Chapter 10, verses 11. Who are written these things? Chapter 10, verses 11, 1 Corinthians, the Bible reads, No, all these things happened unto them for examples. For examples. All these things. Is there a light in the wilderness? For our examples. Balaam, the prophet, casting God's people, our examples. Noah and the generation being destroyed, our examples. Everything was written for our examples. Who? Let's continue. 
Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for our examples. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Friends, we know, and as we shall continue to see in other videos, that the end of the world has come now. It is nearing. So everything in the Bible was meant, and it can be implied, it can be used to teach us. Beloved, I've seen it good to share that before we begin a series of studies, so that you may open your mind. And I pray that Jesus Christ, by his masses, he may open our minds and our eyes. Why? Satan has blinded us. Thank you for watching. Let's pray. Our loving Father who lives in heaven above, we glorify and honor thy holy name because of thy love and thy mercy, that it is too great for us to comprehend. We human beings with our finite and mortal thoughts. Lord, since you have kept us as the stewards of the truth, enable us come to understand the word. Lay basics in us that we may understand everything as thou wants us to do. Let us follow thy will. Let us know you. This is my prayer in faith. Through Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Let God's people say amen. Thank you. Thank you for watching. God bless you.